Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, live coverage, exclusive coverage of IBM Pulse, IBM's cloud conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Mirella Matache, IT Director uh, of Quality Systems at Lafarge. Welcome to the Cube. Did I get that right? Yes, you got it right. Okay. It's, it's actually maintenance and quality systems. Si, pas de problème pour moi, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the cube. Uh, um, so, what do you think of the IBM show here? What's your What's your impression? Well, uh, for me, the IBM show uh, is definitely uh, one of the best shows I attend every year. And uh, mind you, I attend quite a bit because of my position and running uh, uh, departments of maintenance and quality, which is covering pretty much industrial in the plants. Because it's not only about software, it's also about information sharing. And uh, you know firsthand whatever is out there, and you know also how people are using whatever is out there to be successful. So for me, that's why is one of the best So, service management is a big topic here, cloud's a big topic, um, Blue Mix platforms as a service. Um, they say it's supposed to help people's lives get better in terms of IT and also new opportunities. Um, how do you see that, this, this cloud opportunity, in terms of current operations and future possibilities? Uh, Lafarge itself is interested in um, having cloud opportunities because we need to be able to scale up rapidly. We are a company that is um, quite big, is a multinational, is number one in the world in construction materials in cement, is number two in aggregate, is number four in um, uh, concrete, and uh, summer four five in gypsum. So when you have such a huge company with 1,057 uh, sites, uh, when you have 65 countries coverage, different cultures, different uh, instances, and you have a process of standardization, you need to be able to scale up rapidly, you need to be able to, to deliver in a timely manner, and you need to be able to uh, give your footprint or have your footprint in the plants as soon as possible in order not to impact the business process, because whether we like it or not, as a IT, we are overhead. Yeah. So, so you're, you're a big slow, do, co you're a big slow corporation. Yes. And so you have to move fast, as they say. It's hard to move fast when you're big and you have standards. So yes. the goal is to be agile yes. and flexible. How do you do that? Uh, well, agile and flexible is easy to achieve. Supposingly. <laughs> uh, we say that because we are templatizing at Lafarge for, uh, since 1998 which means that we have a history of templatization of our processes and systems that go accordingly uh, for 14, 16 years already. So um, we did orient the templatization or the standardization of the products we deliver uh, around business process, conceptual organization, uh, all embedded into a nice um, uh, IT uh, product which includes integrations uh, with back-end office, includes ERP, includes Maximo as a tool for maintenance management, and uh, everything else uh, uh, delivered with a methodology of implementation uh, that contains uh, change management, contains um, uh, delivery methods, contains uh, auditing, analytics, and measuring and uh, contains a template governance for the template evolution. So that's why I'm saying is relatively easy because we went through a process, a lengthy process of growing up as uh, users of our systems and uh, standardization itself um, over uh, six, seven versions of template. And uh, we are at the point where we can get creative. We are at the point where we can expand the scope of what we are doing to more than maintenance. Uh, that says for all, because for instance, we used to uh, call our template in my group, which is uh, Maximo Competency Center, it was called Maximo Template. Uh, you see the maturity at some point in time, it was called Maintenance Template. And nowadays it's called Manufacturing Improvement Version 7. So it means that we are 
far and above uh, the maintenance process and the preventive model only, but the extension of preventive model process production quality and so on and so forth. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about your, your business and some of the, the, the global trends and pressures that it puts on you as a, a technology practitioner. I mean, you're a huge global company, multi-billion dollar company. You're subject to the ebbs and flows of, of economies around the world and um, very obviously diversified around the world. But so what kind of pressures are you seeing in your business? What kind of demands are the, is the business placing on you? And, and how are you responding from an IT infrastructure standpoint? Well, the major um, pressure we face up is something that you, you express it in a nutshell, but it's one small thing missing. Uh, we are a commodity product. Mm -hmm. So at least the division I'm, I'm running IT for is a, is a commodity product. What does commodity mean? It means that in order to give profit to the stakeholders, when there is a fixed price on the market for your product, and there is a fixed cost for raw materials, resources, and energy consumption, you have to do something to be competitive. And the competitiveness comes from um, excellence in operational activities, excellence in uh, execution, uh, improved and uh, state-of-the-art delivery of uh, the system that is uh, available. It's not that we are up there to be perfect, but we are trying our best to, to achieve that. And, and not only that, cement is, is um, Maybe I'm oversimplifying, but it's easy to do. People would say, we can do cement on paper. So if you can do cement on paper, better have a good system that delivers without fault and without error, because if not, they will use paper. <laughs> You'll be in the cement. You know, they say, yeah, cement shoes. You, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get that IT system right. Where'd she go? She didn't show up for work today. Well, it's a little you bit know? like that, yeah. Okay, okay. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey, so you know, it speaks for itself. I don't want to go there. Okay, but I want to get your, your perspective on this show. What is your, um, what's your reaction to the IBM announcements and the, the, these new capabilities? You've been doing templates, you've been doing composite design, you've been doing IT right, you know, setting the table for your organization. Um, now IBM's got all this stuff. What's your reaction to it? Do you, do you, are you impressed with it? What do you, do you like it? Thumbs up, thumbs down? What's your take on it as an IT director? Well, I summed up definitely because what you are looking for is for uh, rapid development, installation, configuration, delivery, scalability, name it, in one place. This is something that everyone is, is targeting, is running after. Why do we run after that? Is um, It's not only a matter of technology, it's a matter of resources. So in order to have a portability of resources, you need to have the capability to have a system which is easy to know, easy to learn, and uh, you don't need to cross-train all the time the people to be able to deliver and to be uh, there and available. So it's not only about the fact that they have this product, which seems to be amazing, and is fast to deliver it, but you also have can use your resources on and on again on different components or products that are, they are in attach in, in this um, complex uh, delivery uh, and put them at the right task at the right moment without uh, extensive cross training from my standpoint as an IT. And this is the same thing for somebody that's supporting the applications. If I'm used to one or two or three of them, for sure I'm going to be at ease to, to do all the rest. No? So you hear a lot about cloud, obviously. If, if I had asked you four or five years ago what you think about cloud, most IT practitioners would have rolled their eyes and said, oh, well, cloud. It's not raining. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right, it's not raining. <laughs> Okay, but now it's become this sort of accepted term, but I wonder if, if you could describe your, your, your strategy um, as it relates to so-called cloud computing. Uh, would you say that you're primarily, your, your organization is primarily doing internal sort of private clouds? Are you looking at public cloud? Are you doing mostly, uh, is your strategy more to go hybrid? I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Right now, we are doing a private cloud, or somewhat we are mimicking a private cloud in, in the infrastructures we have, and we are um, targeting to go towards similar goal as what IBM is presenting. Uh, why I'm saying that is because currently we have, at least for manufacturing improvement program, we work on a centralized instance, which is something new for the last two years. 
that you have one centralized instance per region today. The tendency was to go with one instance globally uh, due to the resources that are already available, uh, the, the support people and so on and so forth, we decided we go and split in three. It's also another reason because we have a lot of integrations with different financial ERPs. So it's normal to, to have a little bit of segregation. But we already uh, we are already looking at something centralized. Centralized cannot work unless it's having a very strong platform support. I mean, uh, it's not going to be performant. A product that is beautiful and doesn't work because the network is not right or the platform is not strong enough, it's, it's a Rolls Royce that's going to stay in, in, in your parking spot. So. That's the way it is. How about this idea of shadow IT? You talk about this trend towards centralization at your organization. Um, what percent of your IT spend is centralized versus what we would sometimes call shadow IT? Lines of business spending, you know, rogue spending projects or, or marketing driven spending projects. Do you have a sense of that? I do not have a global sense of that, or if I have it, maybe I'm not going to necessarily share it in okay. details. Okay, maybe but, in uh, subjective terms, like yes. high, medium, low. Or something. Yes, okay, so I would say it's somewhere in the medium. Mm -hmm. uh, w the way the spending on IT is um, is an interesting context or complex. Uh, we give ownership to the countries. Around the world you have countries that are managing their own uh, resources and budgets and their investment on the IT side. But there are also global projects that bring to the table the benefits of a global solution. So we empower the countries to take the global solution. It's more work on our side, definitely, to sell our products with the same thing that IBM does or any other uh, software company, if you want to put it like that. But it's just that we are not only software, we are also process, because the template has a business component, the IT component. and. Um, yet giving independence to the country to take it or not. And eventually they take it, because if they see the benefit, if they can measure the benefit, if they can establish their own KPI, they will invest in it. So the cost is in two places. So today. when you have a, a, an initiative that is outside core IT, assuming it's not successful, then somebody will, will kill it, right? But assuming it's successful, do you typically, at some point, bring that back into the IT organization? Do you somehow collaborate with them to make sure that they're you know, complying with the security and the compliance edicts of the organization? How does it work? How does a successful shadow IT operation work? And, and what role does IT play in, in, in the evolution of that project? Uh, there is one uh, component that our CIO has introduced maybe four years ago, three, four years ago which I would call it simply transparency. Uh, actually for us it's a wiki, it's a communication, internal communication around Lafarge, uh, where people are encouraged to, to write in plain text, text all their initiatives, all their questions for that matter, all their doubts, all their comments. So that is actually in encouraging proactivity. The other part that we are uh, saying, when, we, when you talk standard, you don't have to imagine that the standard is something that is rigid, is a block, is a black box that's never going to, and, and you will touch it when everything is going to be stabilized. That's not possible because we evolve our people, technology evolves next to us, actually is bypassing whatever we are doing. So if you don't evolve your templates, by the time you deploy them, you will never achieve the goal. So people are encouraged to propose changes. They are encouraged to uh, communicate changes they want to do or localization they want to do. And what we are trying to do, and maybe that's going to sound a little bit weird, we are trying either to implement a standard or to give a standard way of localizing, which means you are allowed to do this but within these IT standards, so using a certain version of, of, of uh, your internet browser, let's take an example, a simple example, uh, using a specific platform which is common so you can scale it up. Um, so, so we try to bring them as much as possible towards something that can be reused. We used to be lots of initiatives, many ideas, 
and when we implemented Maximo, we had 100 in, um, reports globally, and in one plant we found 230 de developed by the plant. So you can imagine what that means. So much so for the single a, version of the truth. <laughs> exactly. So well, but that gives, tells you something that people don't like your truth. Yeah. yeah. So it means narrow yeah. down what you give them. It's not shadow IT. They're doing it in the open. Exactly. So narrow down what you give them and give them tools which that enable them to develop in a standard way. You don't like or it, make your own. It. Make your own, <laughs> but, but don't follow break this, it. But follow this recipe. <laughs> exactly, but don't break it. Use patterns at all? Exactly. The patterns. That's the idea. Yeah. The patterns. You use, actually, we give them what we call toolkit. A toolkit is a subset of data onto which they can play, they do whatever they want, and yet it's not impacted whatever is out there. So I have to ask, as part of your title, is the, the term quality is in there. Yeah. Does that apply to data quality? Uh, is that part of your responsibility? Yes, or yes. Well, it is on the maintenance side, but actually I'm in charge of, um, of uh, the quality um, IT solutions uh, for the plants of, of cement division which is specifically limb solutions, um, laboratory. It's also software, it's also related to um, uh, analysis, equipment, uh, transfer of information and measurements that are done in the plants. Uh, I don't know, compressive strengths, everything. We will talk about that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Off. We can talk all day, it's Exactly, yeah. it's very interesting. And uh, as simple as it looks. Uh, so we do that. Um, so you make it sound so easy. It's cloud, it's so easy. Well, it is yeah. easy if you want to do it. Well, it's a learning curve, for yeah. sure. But it's an opportunity, and for me, this is a time for opportunities. Um, but quality system for us is the same thing. What I'm trying to do, and we are trying to do at Lafarge, is actually to create synergies. That's a good example why we do not say uh, maximum maintenance template, we say manufacturing. Laboratories have equipment. Laboratories need to maintain equipment. Why should we use another software to maintain the equipment in the laboratory instead of using the process of inspection, the process of preventing maintenance that actually Maximo uses, which is in the same plant? So we used to be oriented on a specific silo before. Now we have started to create synergy. But that comes with maturity and trial and error. It's normal. My final question for you, been a great conversation um, here, great, great energy, is advice for other folks in IT. A lot of people are hearing this story. Uh, we have 70% IBM's reporting, and we're confirmed that there's 70% of the attendees here are first timers for IBM. It's this show, Cloud. It's attracting a new breed of IBM customer. Um, what, what, what's your advice to them in, in working with IBM? What's your, what would you say, um, a summary of the technology? What should they do? What's your just general opinion? And advice to a colleague out there who says, what's this IBM stuff all about? Well, um, the only thing I would advise them to do, because they do it right in regards to the delivery of the product, is to sell it well. Uh, I'm not saying they don't sell well their products necessarily. I'm saying that you have to understand the people you are talking to in order to be able to, to propose whatever you have as your best of breed. Because it is a best of breed, whatever IBM is offering as a product. So uh, this understanding of the people, of their uh, way of thinking, of is, I think what I loved about this conference is the first time I'm hearing from people um, science of planification, uh, artistry of maintenance. Listen, we used to be so technical and we used to be so narrow to the numbers. Mm. Now, it's, with everything technologically that's happening around, we are thinking outside the box, you know? We allow ourselves to, to make it nice, to make it cool, to make it appealing, you know? And all of that is appealing to, to the user that's at the end of, 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 uh, of your uh, microphone. <laughs> you know, and but the, but it's just viable. I mean, in the U.S., they don't have the data problems and you know problem up challenges in Europe. Um, so it sounds like they're they're addressing those. Yeah. Okay, we're here live inside the cube, hearing from the customers themselves, unbiased uh, commentary. Um, cloud is easy if you do it right. Um, thank you for sharing your, your stories. This is the cube. Be right back after this short break. <laughs>